Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kieran Harris and if you are new, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I usually upload every other day so you do get content from me quite often and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. It really does help me out and it helps you out because you do get notified every time I upload or at least I'll show up in your subscription list. So if you want to watch any of my videos, that is a great place to start. Now without further ado, let's get into my... Um, I don't want to call it a review because everyone has been reviewing this palette. Let's just call it like a these are my thoughts, do what you will with it on the Anastasia Subculture palette. Okay, so usually when I do a review, I have notes. I like to go over like all the specs on the palette, tell you how many grams it is and stuff like that. So I'll tell you really quick. This is a cruelty-free palette. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture palette. This came out, has it been two weeks already? So I've had this palette for two weeks. It is a six month shelf life. The eyeshadow palette is made in the USA. I have heard people are super confused. It's just the brush that's made in China. The palette is made in the USA. It is $42. It's available now at Sephora Ulta. I've seen it on Macy's.com. There's a bunch of high-end stores that are carrying this palette. So I don't think this is gonna be too hard for you to get a hold of because of all the controversy that has been surrounding this palette. It also is is basically all matte except for three shades. There is Cube, Electric, and then Adorn that are the shimmer. These two are dual chromes and then Adorn is a like a foil shadow. So basically where do I start? I have a lot of Anastasia palettes so I grabbed everything Anastasia that I own just to show you guys and this is not a new brand to my collection by any means. I have pretty much every like limited edition palette they have come out with. In the last couple of years I even used to have the Dress Your Face palette and I used to have the Artiste palette. I have since decluttered those palettes because I just wasn't using them enough but I do have the Master palette, the World Traveler palette, oh sorry this is the World Traveler palette, this is the Self Made palette and then this is the Modern Renaissance palette. Now this is supposed to be the palette that started it all. This is permanent in Anastasia's line and then Subculture is supposed to be the sister palette to the Modern Renaissance. A lot of people have been saying is is it really the sister palette? A lot of people say yes, a lot of people say no. A lot of people like that it's a darker, more cooler, warm situation. Personally, I don't think it's the sister palette. A lot, <laughs> I do agree when people say it's like the third cousin twice removed because I have a really hard time finding similarities between these two palettes. As you can see, my modern renaissance palette is well loved. I've definitely seen people that have you know definitely beat this thing to death more than I have but I do get quite a bit of use out of this and as you can see there is definitely like kick up everywhere there is shadow more than you know one of my any of my other palettes really so it does create quite a bit of kick up but that's never bothered me about this palette so let me tell you personally about my experience with the subculture palette so my palette arrived on Friday the 28th. This palette launched on Wednesday the 26th, I believe, of July, or Tuesday the 25th, I can't quite remember. But this arrived, and I actually put it on on Saturday morning, I remember, because the shades I used were like Roxy and New Wave, and they blended in beautifully with my skin tone. I was definitely really, really excited about this palette because I always get excited when Anastasia comes out with new palettes. I kind of explained it in that video saying how I think it's great value for money. Their singles are like 12 bucks a piece, so I always buy the palettes because I think it's nice the way they put, you know, color stories together and things like that. I don't have to like overthink it and they're usually affordable enough where I can justify buying them. So I was really excited for a new palette from them just because like, you know, they had been doing a lot of like highlighters and stuff and I was ready for a new palette. When this came out, I was really excited. I was really apprehensive because these shades are not like shades that I gravitate towards on my eyes. Mostly like for the greens. Like I will wear like all of the warm shades, but the greens really like I was like oh my gosh is that gonna go well with my skin tone like I have such a warm undertone I feel like cool tones just muddy on my eyes so anyway you know Roxy and New Wave looked really good that day and I was really enjoying the palette I was super happy then I wore it to work on Monday because I didn't wear any makeup on Sunday Monday was a disaster I used the shade Axis and it just it just looked really bad with my skin tone so then I was really like bummed because I was like oh man I'm trying so hard to like this palette 
palette and I think I used Axis and Adorn on the lid so it was kind of like a weird halo. It was bad. It was so bad for like daytime too because it was so dark and smoky. So that's my other thing about this palette is like I don't know about wearing this during the daytime especially if you want to use some of the darker colors. It's very very dark. And that happened on Monday. Then all the videos started coming out or like I started seeing all the videos with like the controversies and the pan situations and things like that and I was like okay people are overreacting whatever I'm still trying to decide what I think about this palette and so I was like okay so Tuesday came around and I was ready to use this for work and then I started using this shade all star and I just was so unhappy with how that blended. It was just a mess. It wasn't even the fallout that was bothering me. It was just how it was like blending into my crease. It wasn't blending and it just looked like, it kind of like stuck to different patches on my lids. I was just so awful. And usually if I'm like on my way to work, I really don't have time to redo my eyes. So a lot of times I'll just like go with it. But I was so upset by how this look turned out that I literally took my eyeshadow off and started over and I ended up using the color color pop and rose that collection the Karuchi like the rose palette that worked beautifully and I was just so disappointed in this palette and I have not wanted to pick this palette back up since that experience that was last Monday or last Tuesday and I haven't used this palette since and I just feel like that was like the nail in the coffin for me because I already wasn't sure I was gonna like this palette and then I just like did this eye look and I've never felt so shitty about an eye look that I've ever created like I was like oh god this is so bad and that's kind of like my backstory of this palette. Overall, I just wanted to make this video because I am planning on sending this back and I just wanted to document that for you guys on my YouTube channel. Obviously, you've seen tons of reviews. There are ways to make this palette work. I watched Wayne Goss's video, Stephanie Nicole who really likes it, um, Samantha March seems to really like it. Like a lot of YouTubers that I follow and love seem to really like this palette, but for me, just being such a big Anastasia fan, it's just not the formula I'm used to with them. And I'm not the person that applies eyeshadow. A lot of people say like don't like swirl the brush in it which totally makes sense because it's not pressed tight enough for the amount of pigment in this palette but that's not my style of eyeshadow. I don't like swirl like I'm not an eyeshadow bully. I wouldn't say I'm an eyeshadow bully. I'm pretty careful with my products but this was so tough for me. Samantha March saying like she was like it takes me two seconds to dip my brush in. It takes me two seconds to like tap off the excess. It takes me two seconds to blow off any like fallout on my palette and I totally agree with her but when you don't have to do that why would you why would you want to have to do that in your routine when you're busy when you spend $42 and that's just not how you do your makeup like that's not how I do my eye makeup I like to blend shades and these just don't blend there's so much pigment in them it's nice when you blend them but then when you blend them the color goes away and it like oxidizes and muddies and it's just a hot hot mess for me this palette I really wanted to love it but I just don't and I think that's okay and I'm going to return it. And if you like this palette and you're gonna keep it, I am not bad about it. I'm so happy it worked out for you, but for me, it's just like I have so many eyeshadow palettes. I can't justify keeping one I don't love, especially if I have the chance to return it. I am going to be returning it. And yeah, I just wanted to show you guys, like I have a ton of Anastasia products. I have, you know, all these glow kits, all these eyeshadow palettes. I even have like So Hollywood and stuff like that. So it's not that I have anything against the brand or I wanna rip on them. I personally just feel like I don't have the time or the energy for the subculture palette and especially for like an eyeshadow beginner I would say you probably don't want this palette because it's such a mess and like I would go for the modern renaissance palette or just any other palette from Anastasia because this palette just is very difficult to work with for me personally and I also wanted to say that it seems like everyone's just why is everybody being so hard on Anastasia they're usually such a consistent brand and personally I think that's why people are being so hard on them is because they are so consistent and in the makeup world it seems you know all these brands are just like out to get money palette after palette after palette and I feel like Anastasia is just one of those brands that takes their time and makes amazing stuff like they don't do a lot of launches but when they do a launch you take notice because it is something like really special I do feel like for 2017 it seems like they have come out with quite a few products like they just did the Nicole Guerrero kit they did the Aurora glow kit now they did the subculture they did a whole line of lipstick 
lipsticks. So I don't know if they're like trying really hard to keep up with other brands or like what their angle is. But I just feel like I would rather them take two, three months or even like half a year to perfect one product than to do like eight different products for us and like have one be not as great, you know? And I also forgot they did the blushes too, like their three pan blushes. So yeah, I just, I don't know. I just feel like I have a lot of respect for Anastasia because they're not one of those brands that's constantly coming out with new products. So this just kind of was like, mm, you know? And so that's really my take on it. I know it's kind of an odd thing to say, but I don't hate Anastasia by any means. I just feel like the palette was not for me. So it's going back. Also, I did invest in some of their lipsticks. These are their newest product as well. So I have three shades. I have Rosewood Spice and Latte. And I'm actually wearing the shade Rosewood on my lips right now. I was really attracted to the nude shades from this launch. And just from what I've tried out so far, since they are a matte formula, they definitely do pull on your lips they aren't as smooth as I was expecting from them so it does make application a little bit tough like I've seen lip swatch videos and it seems like they glide so well but I don't find them as buttery they're definitely pigmented but I was wishing that they were more buttery so that it didn't skip on my lips I'm gonna keep trying these because I don't feel like I know enough to give you guys a full review but I do have these and I would just say overall I think the packaging is cute but is this like a new revolution matte formula I don't think so so I just wanted to give you guys a few thoughts on the new Anastasia products and yeah I just wanted to make a video about it so I could document this for you guys on my YouTube channel okay, guys those are all my thoughts on the subculture palette let me know if you picked up this palette what your thoughts are are you planning on picking up this palette I've heard it's getting reformulated not reformulated I've heard there's a new batch coming and the shadows are supposed to be getting pressed more firmly or something like that. I can't keep up with this whole drama with the subculture palette. So I just wanted to give you guys my take on it. I want you to sound off in the comments about what your take is on this palette. And thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.